<laughs> always all over the place. Not knowing what I'm doing. It's, um, it's part of my wild creative nature. So where do I begin with Clarissa? Um, so I'm going to just first hold up her book called Women Who Run With Wolves. Mm -hmm. And this book came into my life. I don't want to lie, you know, so I'm going to look up when this came out because that's when I first got it. Okay, so this was published. Was, oh, okay. So this was published in first in 1975, which I'm surprised about. But when she first wrote this book, it was like a thousand pages because she had so much that she wanted to share, so much that she wanted to teach and arouse in women. And of course it got cut down to 500 pages. It's, this is a book that began to make me understand who I was as a woman. And in all the women that I work with, I really recommend this book to them. It's a very difficult book to read. However, it's a book of mythologies. And what she did, and I want to read this particular passage about what she did with this. Um, so what she did is she resurrected generations of lost and hidden female myths and then translated them into the heroine's journey. Now, up until that point in mythology, Joseph Campbell was the king mm. of mythology, mm. and he only wrote about the hero's journey. Mm. So there were many women at that time, Maureen Murdoch and um, several others. Erica Young is one of them. Mm. Even though she wrote a lot of poetry, she was very much about the woman's voice, the erotica, the fire, the wild woman. And she woke up a generation of women. Um, Clarissa, is not as well known to, I think, the everyday woman, only because she's very much in the academic world. But her poetry and her storytelling and all of the actresses and artists and playwrights that she has taught, what she does is she evokes and inspires what she calls the duende. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting because I, I know her, I mean, I don't know her personally, but I've been to her workshops and for the first time in my life, you know, there I said, who am I? You know, what, that, that's the eternal existential question, who am I? However, I was asking not just who am I, but who am I as a woman? Who am I as a Jewish woman? <laughs> that was even more confusing. Um, and why was I asking who am I as a Jewish woman? Because I didn't feel I belonged. Not, not, not as a Jew, but as a woman in my family who were Jewish. And why do I say that? My mother, who I believe had, I think my, all the women in my family, particularly my grandmother, had a lot of duende. They were very creative, they were very outspoken, and they said whatever they wanted to say to anybody. However, unfortunately, my mother, my grandmother, was um, came out of Russian pogroms when she was 16. And her, the rest of her family, from what I know from myth and storytelling, the rest of her family stayed in Europe. And um, she had maybe 16, 17 brothers and sisters. This is what I've heard, who knows. And they obviously all had to die in the Holocaust because she was the only one that came here. She was alone. And she was this tough little 16-year-old and she got married, had three children. And I always remember my grandmother with a little bottle of schnapps in her pocketbook and a cigarette and hiding in her hand. And she would take her bath, pocketbook to the bathroom. And I always say to her, why are you taking your pocketbook to the bathroom? I mean, nobody's gonna steal your money. And she would, it was because she had the schnapps in there and she drank. Oh. <laughs> I, I didn't know this till later. So she was, you know, in her own right, this wild woman who came to America by herself. Um, she never spoke about her family, never spoke about her mother, her father, no pictures. I had no idea who this woman was, except that she was my grandmother. Um, my mother worshipped her, but she could never get the attention she wanted from her. And for whatever reasons, 
whatever genetics <coughs> we might have had in our family, um, my mother was mentally ill. She was a borderline personality. And she was filled with fire and filled with rage and filled with creativity, but she had nowhere to direct it. And in those many, many decades ago, in the Jewish family, the son was exalted. And her brother was exalted, not my mother. So there was always that, I'm not good enough as a woman. I'm, you know, who am I as a woman? I can't have a voice. But she had her voice, but it was a raging voice. But from that voice, that rage, came my evocative power and passion to do it different. I wanted, I was very creative like them. I wanted to be an artist. I wanted to be a writer. Unbeknownst to me, I also became a healer because I started at 16 years old, um, Jungian therapy, which is what Clarissa is. She's a Jungian therapist. She's a healer, she's a storyteller, she does programs helping women, helping artists to find what she calls is the original voice, the duende. Mm -hmm. And actually, duende has no definition. It's, it's, it's the spirit, the soul that comes from the feet up the body into and out. It's that inspiration that we have no language for, but we can do it through song, you know, deep song, mm -hmm. like, the beautiful song we just heard, and um, you know, through movement and dance and the body. So Clarissa is very much about the woman's body. She's very much about the duendo. She's very much about the wild woman, the primal woman, and evoking that original voice because she says we've all become domesticated. Mm -hmm. And what would a woman be if she wasn't domesticated? And we don't even think about that. We don't think about that we are domesticated. But you know, if we think about women you know, in our ancestral lineage, they were not domesticated, not at all. You know, we lived in a matrilineal culture for thousands and thousands of years, and it was completely diminished and um, destroyed by what they call the patriarch warriors. And I was searching and searching and searching in my history and others' histories, um, I mean, I studied every religion, every culture, and I even worked with people from all different cultures. And I couldn't find where I belonged, really. And I would find even when I'd meditate, the Buddhist way, the Eastern way, it was all about leaving the body and leaving the body. And it was like, I don't know. I'm meditating and I'm getting horny. So I don't know what that's about. So I said, why am I getting sexually aroused and want to run around, you know, and write poetry? I didn't, I, like, what is that? What, what's going on here? So when I first stumbled into Clarissa, and of course I was reading these books when God was a woman, um, learning about, there was another book written by Savina Tabell, um, The Laws of Civilizations of the Matriarchs, which was all about how Sarah, you know, she wasn't following Abraham. She was, uh, she was part of a matrilineal culture and she was a leader. And I was getting angrier and angrier and saying, why are women not taught this? I don't understand. And if we look at our entire culture, it's been enculturated uh, through the eyes of the patriarch, you know? So I'm not saying, oh, look, I'm married for 48 years and my husband knows, you know, there's like this, we have these arguments. He thinks he's taking on all of the men in the world when I talk about this. I said, no, you, you're okay. You can, you know, you're okay. <laughs> but you know, the problem is, is that most men are not. They're not educated. They don't, un we as women are first beginning to understand ourselves, even with the Me Too movement. You know, we're talking about sexual harassment and, and just all kinds of horrific stories of sexism in, in the world. Not here, but look at the world. You know, look at how world, women are still repressed. So as I went through my career, um, and I was, oh, my career was all about finding out who am I, it really was. I mean, I didn't even know I was gonna go where I was gonna go. You know, I always was painting and writing, and I loved uh, acting and theatrics, and Kalisha also has a, um, a whole volume of storytelling called the um, Theater of Imagination. So she does all this stuff with theater, and she evokes this duendo. And I said, 
And I realized that's what I was trying to do with the people I worked with and with myself. I was trying to get beyond all of people's traumas, addictions, codependency, and all the psychological terms. And then as I became an expert in trauma, what I found out was that trauma's in the body. It's not in the head. Mm -hmm. And all of this work that was being done on trauma was not working because it's in the body. So I, to know how to evoke that in the body is when I started to begin doing the somatic art spiritual therapies and working very directly in the body and being also very emotionally intuitive so I can kind of track what's going on when I'm working with somebody. But getting back to Clarissa, why I, number one, I felt like I had found, found my tribe. And number two, she was not just a writer and a poet and a storyteller, she was a healer. So I felt like, oh, okay. She, you know, she is there as a leader to, you know, bring this into the world. She was birthing this into the world. And she was born in 1945 and she became a Jungian therapist, a PhD. And she came from a very, very rural community in, in Mexico where they were all weavers and, and um, shepherds and um, you know very much with the earth and the ground. And she came from a tribal type of oral heritage that is very long dead gone. So she was you know, from that type of enculturation. And I, I don't know everything about how she wound up writing this book, but to me, this book is every woman's spiritual Bible. And there's a, a Naomi Goldenberg who wrote, about, who wrote the book Changing of the Gods said every woman's story is biblical. And I believe that truly, that each of us has a story to tell. And when we tell that story, all these fragmented pieces of who we are start to come together. So a great deal of healing arises from a wounded self. The sympathetic and empathetic self creates profound healing. When we courageously explore our own pain, we become more insightful, more ego-contained, more able to awake the essential qualities of the healer. The wound becomes the gift. So that is basically, you know, we're so afraid to go into the duendo, into the dark, into the daring, and tell our truth. So our society is all about be nice, be appropriate, especially for women, you know. Cross your legs, you know, don't let your vagina hang out. Don't let your, you know, your breasts or whatever, have big breasts, small breasts, whatever it is. But she is very much about the body and she feels the body is sacred, no matter what size it is, and that within our bodies is this duendo. So I am very much, it was like, I felt she was bringing words to my soul. She was giving me the images, she was giving me um, just so much in her poetry and I started to read. So. What I want to do is I want to, before I read her poems, her poems are very, very long. But the, the main poem I'm going to read is Amor la Poeta, Open the Door. And this is about the womb. You'll have to excuse me. I get very, like, hepped up when I'm talking. And I haven't spoken <laughs> to a group in about five years. So I feel like I appreciate all of you being here so that I can kind of channel what I want to give and to continue to give and to give me the space to hold this energy. And right now I'm just, I get excited, so I get a little, <laughs> I get a little crazy. I have that craziness in me. All right, so she says, writers, speakers, actors, performance artists, storytellers come to study with me because they want to learn and or deepen original voice. I don't teach motivational techniques to make a person stand out nor do I teach original voice. I conjure it instead, push it, pull it, draw it, evoke it out of them. That's what we have to do because it's so buried. It's so buried. We're so afraid to tell our truths. And to me, that's what's going to free the world. It's going to free our entire world because we all can just turn on the television and see that we're living in lies mm -hmm. and fear. I mean, I don't have to go into politics, but we can just see how we're kind of on this cusp of racism, sexism, 
um, anti-Semitism, control, power, why, you know, when I was growing up in the 60s and it was all like, burn your bra and love, who thought that we'd come to this time in our history and it didn't get there. If anything, it went backwards. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we can't let it die. You know, we have to speak up as women. I mean, and I'm not saying men are excluded. They can join the club if they want to. But this is the feminine, not only in women, but in men. You know, men have this duendo as well. And they have been enculturated, and they have been suffering from the patriarchal culture as well. So this is like a, a revolution of, of the soul. And I believe that she, among other women, have been ushering it in for a long time. So I feel like I'm picking up the banner. And I'm saying, this is where I am, this is where I live, this is where I'm gonna speak. And for me, I had to go through, I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years. It's always been my message. But 10 years, uh, how long ago was it was ago? 10 years ago, 15 for, my mother died in my Oh, it's been uh, 15 years. 15, okay, I lose track. But it seems like yesterday. 15 years ago, my mother died in a psych ward, and my sister, three months later, committed suicide. So when that happened, I had a nervous breakdown. And all the years that I have been helping others and studying, I had to really put to the test what I believed was true. Because I developed a chronic condition mm -hmm. that no medical doctor was able to do anything because most medical professions don't know anything about chronic illness. Plus I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, which was like, what? How long have I been walking around with that? You know, so I had, so as learning about trauma, I just said, oh yeah, yeah, this is what we're all walking around with, but we like pretend we're not, you know, because it says trauma is not, is, 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 everyone has been traumatized in some way. So, you know, talking about trauma is, is, is so new, it only started 15 years ago. So when they died, I had to really focus. I really had to dig in. I really had to ask myself, what is it that I need to do as a woman coming from a certain lineage, a woman who is a wife, who is a mother, who has a daughter and a granddaughter, I have female lineage, that I wanted to change. You know, I wanted to see something different for both of them. I wanted to see a new perspective, a new world for them. And, and that's when I decided to slowly work with women. You know, I was work with families, I worked with children because I was in the educational system. And it just evolved. I said, I'm a woman and I want to work with other women. I want to I wanna help other women find this duendo, the original voice, to move past this fear we have of telling the truth. So in those last years, I developed my organization, um, Give Her a Voice, which did a um, multimedia production. And then I started to do more groups, but then I needed time to heal. So I took a step back. I said, okay, this is my time. And I shut off everything. I like went into my cave. I said, this is my time to find my duendo. And slowly, but surely, <laughs> I've been crawling out of my house and working with some very special women who really hunger for this. And it's been exciting for me to be able to offer this and to help and be a guide and to help women free themselves. So that's my connection to Clarissa because she speaks my language. You know, she speaks, like I said, my tribal language. And I do believe that in every culture there is this tribal language for, for women, but we have to decide to find it. You know, and each one of us have to find it. It's not like a, you know, a collective, you know, let's everybody say, oh, and you know, it's not like that. We have to individually dig it out of ourselves. And we need support, and that's why I'm developing this support group, because we need the support. We need the witness, we need the validation. We need to know that we're not alone. So I'm now emerging out of my cocoon, and I've been working with these programs, writing like a mad woman, because madness and being feral and being duendo is all part of this freedom. So my mother was a mad woman, 
but destructively. So, you know, all energy can be either destructive mm -hmm. or constructive. Mm -hmm. I don't look at it as positive or negative. I look at it all as energy and how we're going to navigate it, how we're going to move it, how are we going to um, find a way to rebuild, you know, like the, the phoenix, you know, burning it down, turning to ash and rebuilding. So all of that, you know, now, you know, for years it was very hard for me um, about my mother and my sister, but then I realized all their internal rage, which I also carried, was beautiful because it gave me my passion. It gave me my desire. It gave me my voice. But I had to learn how to use it. And I had to learn how to use it on myself first. And then the people around me who were the closest to me, my family. And then continue to share with others. So that's why Clarissa is my guiding light. She's my, you know, she's beautiful. So before I read some of her poems, I'm just gonna read some of her quotes. Um, she said, Mary is a girl, gang leader in heaven, said Dr. Estes, who has ordered the lunchtime special of meatloaf and mashed potatoes. She is fuerte, strong, fierce. We have been given this cleaned up Angela, a Angela, Angel, Angelized version of her, but the saints had calluses on their hands. So this is what we don't talk about, you know, the women of the Bible, who they are. They were fierce women. They were going against the tide. You know, they were coming out and saying, this is, you know, who I am as a woman. This is who I am as a spiritual woman. But they were of the body, and it became translated into something that was really a lie. Especially if you look at the mythologies, you know, Mm -hmm. Women were the sinners, you know, they were the prostitutes. This was all made up propaganda so they can control women. So nature does not ask permission, blossom and birth whenever you feel like it. This is all Clarissa's stuff. I'll tell you right now, the doors to the world of the wild self are few but precious. If you have a deep scar, that is the door. If you have an old, old story, that is a door. If you love the sky and the water so much that you almost cannot bear it, that is a door. If you yearn for a deeper life, a full life, a sane life, that is a door. So that's what I'm gonna read is open the door. And there's some Spanish words and I have a very strong Brooklyn accent so I'm not <laughs> sure if I'm gonna pronounce the Spanish words correctly. Okay. Before you start, I just have to run out. Okay, sure. You don't have a baby or anything. <laughs> Excited like that. Well, that's cool. It's getting yeah. Yeah. more mature in life. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind if I wait till she comes back? No, no, no. Go ahead. You want me to go ahead? Okay. Okay, Abuela Puerto open the door. She is 12 years old, going on 20 to life. She is God at five feet tall. Reminds me of my granddaughter. But Abuela Puerto, open the door and let her in. Give her food. Old Valencia lives in the parking garage at the university with her leg, with her bags and packs all the floor, on the floor all around her. She washes her 84-year-old body in the sink of the library with a piece of flannel from her deceased husband's pajamas. Abuela Puerta, she is God. Florencia is God, the God named Florencia. Remember that old Abuelita, your grandest grandmother? how she staggered toward you on legs so thin. You were just a baby then, and she smiled all over your infant self as you rose young and steaming from the void. That was God in her, Abuelita form, crying with joy just to see you. Que, 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 babita, babita, says the grandmother God. Look, she says, I opened the door in my belly for your mother. Mira, look, your mother opened the door in her belly for you. Ah, this grandmother, you can see God through her. God is your grandmother. Remember that red room where you grew up? That was God. Remember the warm hands that received you? That was God. Remember your father's hands holding your face as though it were a jewel? I never remember that. That moment, God shone through you. Maria Martinez tells me she dreams of chickens made larger when she cannot find shelter. She licks her hands and they taste good, she says. She is God. God is homeless. 
yet she has hope. Abuela Puerta, letter N. Your maid who snores, well, maybe God snores. Your maid is God, but you can never find his socks. Your lover who burns from, for things you cannot give. Your, your maid is God. God is a housewife in mud face and curlers, standing at the door in a house coat, waving goodbye. God wears a house coat once in a while. Oh, wor oh wor world, who is young? and has loved so deeply, and been so betrayed, whose skin hangs like rags, whose arms have no muscle, whose eyes have lost luster. Open the door of your heartache. Step through the door of your betrayal. Pass through the hole in your heart. Pass through, it's a door. Abuela Puerta, open the door. Oh, the world is a thing whose lover disappoints, who is tired of the news that is no news, who toils for silly people doing silly things, Pass through the eye of the needle that shreds your skin. Abuela Puerta, it is a door. Your only hope, step through the break in your own broken heart. Abuela Puerta, open the door. Do you remember that your legs are El Elino, the ring that circles your lover? Your legs make a door. Pass through the door. Abuela Puerta, pass through the door. Open the door, the most sacred of doors. Remember the fire is a door. Destruction is a door. Song is a door. A scar is a door. The forest on fire is a door. The ocean wound is a door. Anything that needs us or calls to us is a door. Open the door. Anything that hurts us, anything we make holy, opens the door. Pass through the door. All those years of seeming indestructibility, and then the grandfather of your world dies. His heart explodes, and yours breaks into a thousand pieces. Each tiny piece of your shattered heart is a door. These are doors. Open the doors. Pass through the doors. Whatever has died and left is big, muddy boots. Cold and hard by the back porch door. Put them on. Walk through the door of this death, the door that dying is made for you. Walk in those boots that bend with your warmth. You are the grandfather now. You are the grandmother now. Open the door. The world is a tribe of one-breasted women walk through the doors of the scars on their chests. Abuela Puerta, open the door. Over the edge of the world you go, into the abyss we all much march in time. Put the best medicine in the worst of the wounds. The lake in which you almost drown, that is a door. The slap in your face that made you kiss the floor, that is a door. The betrayal that sent you straight to hell, that is a door. Same old story, all strong souls first go to hell before they go do the healing of the world they came here for. If we are lucky, we return to help those still trapped below. Open the door, open the door. Hell is a door that is caused by pain. Opening is a flower, rain opening the earth, the kisses of humans, opening the hearts of the world. These are doors, no further lamentation required. The scar drawn by razors. That is a door. The scars drawn by chainsaws across forests, those are doors. These are all doors. The poem of new life that comes every dawn, the soaring of the sun, that is a door. The grave is a door. The door to hell is a door. Abuela Puerto, open the door. Abuela Puerto, open the door. Abuela Puerto, open the door. So, as you can see, her words come from her deep original voice. And, you know, I just feel so much of what she authors is, is, is beyond words. It's a feeling, it's an emotion, it's evocative. So, as I said, I mean, I could read more poems, but her poems are long, and I think that one says it all, and all that I have spoke of her, and how my own story, I feel, relates to what she is addressing. And, I hope that something that I offered gives you some inspiration <laughs> and passion to continue doing what you want to do in life. Thank you. Let me just get a